Okay, um, yeah, as uh, Will just said, uh, my talk doesn't actually have an abstract in the proceedings, and I may be the only one. There have been a couple of reasons for that. Um, I had a very nice vacation in South America, and then I got ill, but the real reason was that I just thought, 21 is half the truth, what do you think I'm going to talk about? Any takers? <laughs> 42, yeah, the ultimate answer to the universe, uh, life and uh, everything. What else? I have, I have two more that I was thinking a lot. What? Two times seven. Oh yes, that's two. We can do a little bit of mass exercise <laughs> first day. Um, anything else? No? Uh, the age, uh, of, age of late to e Yep, that's another topic I want to talk about. Uh, latex 2E became, which we say in Germany, it's no longer a term, but they're actually being uh, much meaning, großjährig. Of age. Uh, yeah, of age these days is 18, but it was 21 at some point. So latex is, is that old. And uh, I was looking to find a t-shirt from, from um, 1994, Santa Barbara. Actually, he still had one. Oh. That's bad. Why? I think he just went to sleep. Oh, he went to sleep. So I have to talk faster and move my... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, yeah, uh, I, I still found it, but I couldn't actually put it on because it had holes all, all over the place. <laughs> um, in, in the back. Um, there was a, a dolphin, I think, on, on, on the back side. And all the black bits, they, they washed away. It's very nice looking, actually. <laughs> Anyway, so that's the second one, and um, let's see, I have a third one. My company oh. is thinking I'm working 21 years for them. Um, actually, I'm working, I think, 26 or 27 years for them, but um, they, they kind of count differently, so that's another term. <laughs> Meaning the salary? Meaning what? Your salary. Oh, your salary, so yeah. Well, I was working freelance for them, and this is why they are not counting the whole time. So I, I, I went off freelancing when our f oldest child was born, and I didn't want to work five days a week, and that was the only way to do it. So yeah, I'm, I'm largely going to talk about LaTeX today. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk a bit about why LaTeX is so old, because... Um, it has, besides a lot of other stuff, uh, quite an important aspect, I think, which is that uh, you can take any old document and usually it just works still. Even back to the 80s, um, a lot of documents will still work. So there, there has been a compatibility um, set of ideas around it that you want to have long-preserving, stable situation. And what happened was uh, Leslie developed the LaTeX 2, 209 actually, he developed something that should be LaTeX 3 back then, but uh, the publisher didn't get it, so 209 ended up in the book printing, that's why, why that is the name. And, and that, that stayed basically very stable for a decade roughly. But by the end of the day, that was around 89, 90, um, LaTeX became used outside the English-speaking world and um, that caused a couple of problems. People were thinking they want to have the word chapter being translated to the language, it was hard-coded in the language and so on and so forth. So, so at the end of the lifespan of LaTeX, it started to get separated into different kind of um, formats and we ended up with <coughs> different preloaded fonts. Some people in, invented the use of times in it instead of computer modern. Uh, we, the new font selection scheme came along which required a different format. Uh, we had the mass, uh, AMS tech uh, being added which was it, its own format and people could actually no longer nicely send a document from one place to the other because it may work, it may not work. So it was kind of a, a mess really uh, uh, around those days and 
Back then, what we tried to do was to bring it all back together into one single form, in a way that was as little luck as necessary, the old documents would still work. And I think we did a reasonable good job. It was a hurdle to actually get people to move over. Um, but um, around 1994, we introduced LaTeX to Epsilon or LaTeX to E. And yeah, I think on the whole, that was a very important move back then and the fact that we actually got a good user base going and it took us a couple of years to actually get stable so we had a lot of activities in the first years by, by fixing stuff that wasn't quite right some ideas that didn't got implemented too well some stuff that was still missing and got added sort of over time additional packages additional bits to the kernel support we had release cycles of six months in those days. Um, since it was sort of the transition period, that was kind of okay. Um, after that, um, it started to get stale. In other words, the, the, the kernel itself was kept very stable. It wasn't changing. Bug fixes were usually not applied to the latex kernel. So the kernel stayed, stayed the same all over the place, but obviously some things needed to be done to certain things that were identified to be wrong, and so we <coughs> invented something called late, fix latex 2 e as a package in which we put all the, all the um, corrections, additions, whatever, that we didn't want to put in the kernel to not have somebody say, oh, my document doesn't work any longer. Uh, so in some sense, the kernel without this package was very, very stable. It wouldn't change at all. Obviously, packages in, in the later world were changing, so <coughs> it wasn't quite that simple. But if you take the kernel and you immediately load LaTeX, uh, fix LaTeX 2E, it was kind of a moving target still. And well, not too many people actually were using these fixes, so basically the majority was relying on the kernel with the bugs in it or with the missing features. And the problem that we had with um, fixed latex to e was also that it was starting to become a problem over the years because there were some bugs that we had to fix, which in some sense were severe, like uh, if you look at the float mechanism, if you have a double um, spread float in a two-column environment, it could go out of order to the single co um, float floats, single column floats, because they were just being managed in, in, in separate queues and the queues were not actually synced to each other. So you got the orders wrong. In the, uh, in the kernel implementation, there were wrong running headings and two columns, stuff like that. That was fixed in, in, in fixed to e but it wasn't fixed in the kernel. Now, there were also some other additions and sometimes sort of changes to, to the interfaces that were only in fixed to e And now, in the last, I don't know, five years, people were starting to, some people were starting to put this package into class files. So it was under the hood, suddenly in there, depending on which class file you were using, which package you were using. And if there's anything in there that was changing the, um, the interfaces, then obviously if you have a changed interface, it's something that depends on the interface, wouldn't work in one or the other case, or it would have to test is fixed to e loaded, and then you get in all these kind of problems of which order things have to be, um, and so on and so forth. And if it, if you load it yourself, you can change the order. But if some package is loaded some, by some other package, controlling the order of different things is going to be complicated. So this is going to sleep soon, so I have to move. Okay, so that was going up till last year, like this. And, well, last year we started to 
really think there is something that needs to be done. It is going to go too stale. And so in, 19, uh, in 2015, or end of 2014, we really sort of trying to travel and uh, just hope everybody has his traveler's ticket, the uh, towel there. I bought one with me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, halfway through. And it's about time. The important bit is it's slightly cheaper for us in, in terms of management and, and maintenance. And you don't have to, to worry too much, don't panic. It will still keep sort of a stable policy. But the policy is going to change. Um, basically, what we are going to do, or what we have done, for those who have the 215 LaTeX, and I think many of you will have it running, we now have a policy of roll back, roll forward. Now, what does, does this mean? It means basically that we have decided it, is not, it wasn't a very good idea to have this separate package and fix stuff there. And then some people have it added, some people have it not added. And, uh, and things go to sort of chaos and, uh, on the back end. So what we are going to do is we're going to fix, take the fixes back into the kernel. So we, we are going to put all those um, fixes and enhancements that have been added to fi uh, fix LaTeX 2E back into the kernel plus in the future anything that we think is important to be added there. On the majority situation this will not be visible to anybody in practice. But of course there are exceptions and we're going to talk about this as well. Um, one of the things that we introduced with the new release is a package called LaTeX release. And that has one purpose. You can freeze the LaTeX kernel to a specific date. So if you put in something like use package 2015, 1st of January, LaTeX release, the kernel re will revert to exactly that kernel on the fly. So it has to come very early, obviously, but it is something that you can have all the specifications being set to a certain level in both directions. Meaning, it also works if you have work with somebody that has an old LaTeX and doesn't for some reason want to upgrade or downgrade, um, no, in this case upgrade, uh, or can't upgrade because it's a university version and it is only upgraded when they decide to upgrade it. You can give, the only thing he needs is the current version of LaTeX release package and then that will upgrade the kernel he has to the kernel that is requested. So it goes both directions. Um, it is also there if for some reason you have a document which relies on a certain misfeature. Um, like I was talking about the wrong order of, of flows or the, the wrong setting of the running headers and you have done something manually to fix it because you expected it to be in a certain way. If you then request the kernel of, of that time where you did the document writing, you get exactly this, this, this kind of interfaces, behaviors and stuff back. So obviously you would need to what kind of year or or, or date that kernel is if you if you run into that problem, but uh, we're not going to move them out into a weekly basis, so it should be too difficult if, if that need arises. It also gives you the possibility, if you have a very important work, to actually stick to a certain kernel version, even if you upgrade your LaTeX. 
So like if you're writing a book and you don't want to change anything. Of course, I mean, everybody knows this here, it is not just kernel. I mean, we have all the package authors who upgrade their packages, who change them possibly in an incompatible way. So if you are writing a book, my advice is always take a tech life and this is your source and you take the source and you, anything you do on top of it, you put aside and this is the whole definition of your, of, of your work. Um, but I mean, in, in many, if not all cases, you will get by by, by sort of just setting, setting the date if you have to. Um, so you will not patch all the packages? Um, <laughs> we will in the sense of third point. Oh. Any package author who has a need to rely on a certain interface, say, and we decide to change that or has changed in the past, can provide alternative code. Um, so let's, let's assume we have the situation that that a certain functionality has been extended or modified and the way this package is working with it is expecting one or the other situation. Mm -hmm. then it can have alternative code depending on the date of the kernel. And this is what this include in release is, is good for, meaning that um, if you go with the latest release package in your document, all the packages that make use of include in release will automatically be able to, to adjust to whatever the document is requesting. But it is not meant to be as a sort of release management level for packages. It is meant, it is meant to be give the ability for packages that rely on a certain feature like a bug that they had to work around in a certain release, and this bug is now gone in LaTeX in, 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 in the kernel, they can add the code for the clean version, and if they need to, on, because it's run on an older version, they can keep sort of a complicated fix that they had in their packages this way. Okay, so this is understood on, on, on how that is supposed to work. Okay, fine. Obviously, there is the ability to have blunder happening. And um, we just managed to do that as we did in the past. Uh, even though we have a big test suite and everything. Um, some stuff are new, sometimes you make a mistake. So our approach to controlling our mistakes is normally if there is extension enhancement or a long-term bug fix. I can't remember. There was one bug we discovered or got reported recently, which was two, 20 years old. So it was 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 in, in 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 a very old early version of, of the latex sources, and it wasn't in there forever. So if we're going to fix that bug, and it makes sense actually to fix it, it would go into something like latex release, so you can revert back to an earlier <coughs> kernel version if. if if, if you make use of that bug. On the other hand, we also managed to get, um, what was it? The allocation routine for, for counters or tokens. Um, oh, I screwed up. <laughs> um, Why well, I didn't say any, any names. Uh, we had the code in twice, somehow, instead of controlling it properly and as a result one was overriding the other so effectively it was not being reverting itself to the older version of the allocation routine in that case. So if, if we make a new release and immediately find a bug, we were not going to make another release and say between those two weeks, two months whatsoever, um, we have two releases and you can revert between the two. We will issue what we did in the past, in the early days, a patch release of the same major release. And those patch releases are really for the oops kind of thing. We shouldn't have done that. Because we are not expecting in the sh very short term people to start actively making use of that mistake. And if somebody did, well, he has to fix his document. Um, 
as a consequence, well, <coughs> after the next release, if you go and try to revert using LaTeX release, you will always get the latest version of that major release. You're not getting any of the intermediate ones. So, for example, if you now, assuming in winter we have another release, say December um, 2015, if you revert back to the January version, you will get the version called patch release 2, not patch release 1 and not patch release 0. Um, and we had two patches. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it is. Okay, so, so, so that's the idea. Short term, we will issue a patch release if necessary to get something sort of corrected immediately. But anything which we can expect, like we had in the past, that people are actually making use of it in their document for some reason, it goes into the standard release management version so you can revert to an earlier version or, or have it, so take it out again. Okay, so what did we do in 2015? Um, as I said, we fixed, uh, we, we added the uh, fix2e package content basically into the kernel and that is on one hand fixes and on the other hand it's enhancements that have been there and nobody was using them. Oh, well nearly nobody, because it was not there really in, in practice. So the fixes, we had the problem with the one column, two column issue, we had the wrong header in the, co uh, in the two columns, we had something simple but nevertheless a little bit uh, discouraging, you have no hyphenation after you have a figure inside a horizontal text, so the next word is not being hyphenated. Um, so, uh, but the figure is not there for, for a very good reason. You can move it two words up front or one line up. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. So, so it's not quite clear why this word is suddenly not hyphenated. So it is now hyphenating properly. We had this, an issue that this backslash add sign was discarding spaces in, in, in certain running arguments. We had flush button problems that it wasn't actually doing flush button properly and stuff like that. So, ah, uh, yeah, and we added the optional argument to loads checking. Um, maybe one of you, the other, one or the other will remember that one. Um, there is a situation if you, if you um, add rubbish letter in the optional argument of a figure, they will, they have been silently ignored. So if you, for example, put in an uppercase H in, but you didn't load the, the float package, it was just the same as nothing inside. And uh, there were a certain situation where that could be really, really harmful. So, so what we did at some point a couple of years back was to, to, to test that the, the arguments are really meaningful or defined and um, that was only in, in fixed to e at that time so it's now sort of standard inside. So um, yeah a couple of enhancements we added uh, there and now they are in the kernel is that emphasis can have something else than a switch between Roman and, and um, italic. You can emphasis using small caps or something, whatever you define, but there's a, there's a mechanism now as, as a parameter to, to set this up in a, in a class file. We have had text superscript in later 2e, but for some reason we never added text subscript. Um, so that was defined in fixed 2e, and it's now in LaTeX. We had um, a lot of additional commands made robust to avoid all the, the bug reports we get because something is in a heading and suddenly behaves strangely. And uh, the other one was declare mess sizes. You could only use points, not centimeters, not nothing else. So you could, couldn't add, add a dimension. You can't do that. So this is, this is fixed to E. And we now more or less 
properly the whole set of the e-tech stuff uh, with the extended registers up front and it doesn't need any any other things uh, as this is this is a quote from Joseph just took us about two decades to make a decision like that <laughs> and this is the young folks they are so uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, there has been some 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 talk about that already. Um, we now have worked or are still working on getting support for the major engines all controlled from one point. One of the problems we had in the past was that. Um, we were essentially um, having a test suite for LaTeX. It was only working with PDF uh, tech. And um, the LaTeX formats for the other engines were basically injecting codes at various points uh, or relying on, the, on additional packages on the outside to actually work. And um, that was in some sense quite unstable because you, you didn't really know what was going under the hood between uh, code in the kernel coming from different places. So we, we, we now built the basis for, for that to have a, a defined state in, in, in the kernel so that uh, allocations for the registers type are now done and provided as an interface for packages to use. From, from, um, from the later kernel. Uh, Joseph talked about the Unicode range and his Wonderland situation and what he's doing there. And um, that kind of thing is now part of the kernel. And as a result, what we are able to do is now basically test our full set of test sets against all the engines. And we are doing that for for um, releasing. In fact, we are doing it in, in well, in, in steps, let's say. Um, right now, when, when we test, we test against ETEC and CTEC. Um, those need to pass. We are not requiring that the Lua Tech uh, test suite is passing. And the reason for that is that we still have about a hundred failures. Now what we can do is we can, and in some cases it makes sense to say the output of our test should be different in this engine compared to this engine. I mean, if the test is about font encoding or input encoding, and in one case it is a Unicode machine and in the other one it's an 8-bit machine, there are certain differences to ex be expected in that particular test. And we, we have the ability in the test suite um, to account for this and provide two defined outputs for or one defined output per engine, basically. But uh, in, and, and also, the engines have slightly different ways of displaying output. Sometimes there, there are more spaces in a log file, or the breaking is different, or the error messages has been mistyped. I mean, those kind of things. I mean, you, you can accept that as, as being an acceptable difference. So we, we try to normalize the output of our tests first before we make the comparison. But in case of, uh, of Lua Tech, it is still much too many, or many too many. And some of them, we will over time sort of determine that they are okay. Some of them, as we found, turned out to be simple bugs of some sort. Um, so we had a, a number of those being, being reported back just by, by seeing suddenly slight differences that we couldn't explain otherwise. So that's, that's still an area of um, yeah, work, I would say, but in, in, in the short to medium term, I think we will have all three engines running under the test suite. In, in term, I mean, they are running under the test suite, but in terms of actually certifying a new format against, against it. So yeah, this is about what we did to the 215 kernel plus two patches to fix what we did wrong when we got it out. And Petra, which is in the audience, but I haven't met her yet, is she? 
Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, she was probably happy to get all these big boxes coming in after a short time, several times. Uh, that's, sorry for that. Okay, so that's, that's what happened uh, on the 215, and uh, we'll continue then in a similar fashion. And then, final topic. Uh, going back to my 21 years in uh, <laughs> HP, yes. I had a, a bit of a spell of um, health issues early this year and that made me sort of rethink of what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. And then very drastically within a week or so, I decided it's about time to leave that part of the industry. And um, yeah, last Wednesday I had my last active day, or I would have had my last active day because I was ill the last week. Um, meaning that um, I no longer actively work for, for EDS, so 26 years come, come to an end. As a result, that's my plan at least, is uh, to have a good relaxing part of this year to, to get back the strength and getting, getting sort of done and stuff sorted, but then probably just have fun. And um, sort of my long, long time of fun is meaning that I'm going back to type of free research and those kind of things much more than I could in the last year. So that's that's kind of the plans for the next years. So that's about it. Thank you. Curiously, how far back do we uh, specify a LaTeX UE engine? Right to the beginning? No. Uh, <laughs> because of this stability situation, the kernel didn't change between between 94 and 96. You don't want to, to really understand how much changes went into that. From 96 on, basically, the kernel didn't change, really. I mean, we, we put in a few small things, but they were so minor in, in, in the early day. There's no reason for somebody to want exactly that. Um, so the idea is really you go back to basically the kernel of for, uh, 2014, but you can specify 1996, you still get the, four, the, the one from <laughs> 2014. What about fixed log tech 2E? Because that evolved over time, right? That did involve over time, and we could, we didn't do that, but we could actually, if, we, if that is deemed to be possible to, to <laughs> just <laughs> take. No, I mean, there, 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 are four, there are four areas in it. This is quite right. It, it would suddenly become, make that situation better as it was in the past. Because in the past, if you had a document, say written in 1996, and it had fixed LaTeX 2E in it, it would change, well, potentially change over the years. Each time you recompile it, it will have more functionality, maybe some fixes in it that would suddenly apply to your document. So if you have these five versions, they might potentially be five times different. I doubt it, it would be in reality, because if you add a couple of um, uh, robust commands, it wouldn't change anything in your document, but theoretically it could. So the situation up to last year for you, what you would get whatever it was. So I'm not sure it's really worth doing. It could be done. It's, it's actually not so difficult, because it's only four, four or five times. Yeah, no. Probably aren't really worth doing that. Yeah. That's about the kernel. What about the document classes? Um, I'm not asking about tools because that's obviously forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say this way. I still stick to LaTeX use 17, I think it is, where we said we are not going to change the aesthetic design of the designer, whoever it was, that influenced <laughs> Leslie that this is the right kind of standard article design and, and, and claim that changing the margin here to something else is making things better. So 
I will not advocate changing the classes on any of those levels. If for some reason somebody shows me a bug that is related to a class file, say, um, and like this strange one about the spacing, it's not in the class file, but there is a, this spacing bug which is in there for 20 years. And it's really bad, in fact. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it has many documents that actually are being affected, but yeah. If, if you have it, uh, then it's kind of nasty because it doesn't show up, it just produces rubbish. So if there is a bug in that, I, wouldn't, I would think that class files would apply to, to the change, so they would get an include in release upgrade, so you have the two, two situations in the same way. But uh, not the aesthetics. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, I'm confused a little bit because you said that uh, including release is not meant for packages to to, to provide different versions of the of the package <coughs> and related to kernel. So how why, why are classes different? Um, no, they are not different. But if Okay, let, let me try that again. I don't think include in release is the right kind of method to provide functionality enhancement changes to long table and, and track them. Yeah. Um, but it is correct that if, for example, the float style relate. Uh, hacking into one of the lower level interfaces of LaTeX in a way it shouldn't have done, but there was nothing better to do at the time, has now a problem because we finally cleaned something up internally on that interface and it needs to understand the difference between is it 2016 or 2015 that it has a method to stay in sync with whatever kernel is running, kernel structure. And I consider the LaTeX standard classes as being very tightly related to, to, the, um, to the kernel side. So if there is a real bug in, in the way chapter is being, I don't think there will be somebody to convince me about this, but just to make a case, in the way chapter is working or not working, or, obviously, if we make a change in the kernel that has to be reflected <coughs> against the class, then the two <coughs> should stay in sync. That will have to be our final question, I'm afraid, but please yeah. join me in thanking Frank Freestock, but more importantly, congratulating him on his retirement. Oh, yeah, isn't it right? That was my son. This I got for my birthday. I mean, that was a little bit nasty in some <laughs> sense, but uh, on the other hand, oh, it does again. Anyway, yeah. <laughs>